Okay, where did we leave off? We left off on we were about to download Livewire. So let's go back to the plugins main and search for Livewire. There she is. Very good. Alright, so let's start installing our plugins. Now we've got all our plugins installed into the Winamp. So let's start Winamp. Alright, and let's put a let's put something in here to play. I can find the playlist. Here we go. Yes, I know. Cheesy. All right. All right. So we'll play that while we do our work here. So you open up preferences. You can also do it by hitting Control P. And the first thing we're going to configure is our DSP setup. Now, BugPog LiveWire now comes with its own DSP stacker, so that's the first thing we select. And there goes LiveWire. Right. Alright, and now we're done with the preferences. And of course, we need to set up Shotcast. Oh, that went loud. Let's put that back down again. Okay. Alright, and as we see, we have our Shotcast server still running. I'm going to configure... Our shoutcast. Oh, wrong thing. Or was there an admin? Huh, I'll figure out. As I said before, we're going to do MP3 at 96k in the first endpoint and MP3 at 48k on the second endpoint. Very good.
and see if it works. It does. Very good. I just love it when things work out the way they're supposed to. Alright, let's check this because our audio levels are not all that constant. Alright, now for a live wire. Now, a point of note. The audio coming from Winamp, the songs, all have to match the kilobits per second, bits per second, and number of channels. Otherwise, LiveWire will be forced to reset and reopen the audio device that you selected to capture the secondary audio with. I've already done that here with these with these songs here, so we won't see that here, at least I don't think. Alright, so just a rough overview of LiveWire's different modes. Selecting A over here, well, of course, it means that you're going to be on automatic mode. And what that means is when the input level, the percent RMS, reaches this trigger threshold here, live wire will kick in at this level, the secondary audio source. So let's go ahead and give that a test. I've got my microphone selected. I'm going to turn this off real quick so it doesn't get screwy. As you can see, my microphone audio levels have uh, triggered the RMS. Everything looks good. So let's give it a test. Testing, testing. If you heard that, I don't know if you can hear that or not, but it did. It did kick in when I when I spoke. And it mixed it appropriately to the audio level that you selected. Now for manual mode. As you can as you can hear, I think the audio went away and it's now all the microphone when you, when you slide this all the way over. And yeah, I hear my own voice now. Alright, so let's turn that off. And now demonstrate push to talk. So yeah, this won't actually mix in until you actually hit this button or it's held down when you if you hit this button. So I'll just show you how that works. So yeah, selecting the different modes to enable the different mode and uh, configurations. So let's go ahead and, and test our push to talk. So testing, testing, one, two, three. And if you can hear that. It makes the uh, a lower level of the audio with the higher level of the secondary audio input. So we'll just turn this off for now. Now this doesn't mean that it's not collecting the buffers anymore. It's still collecting them, and the point of this is to is to keep a uh, 
keep a, a kind of as, as level a CPU processor usage as possible. And now I'll explain the uh, these controls here. This one don't mess with unless you want to just straight up merge without leveling either signal f from either Winamp or your or your selected audio source. And I'll demonstrate that here because if you uh, if you're not careful, it will clip. So let's test that. Testing, testing. Yeah, there it goes. And that's basically instantaneous on that. Okay, these fade in and fade out rates. The uh, they're not actual seconds. They're they're parts of a second with what you selected as the uh, fade r uh, the fade level. So, for example, on automatic mix-ins, if I put this at exactly halfway point, it will take exactly half that many seconds to fade in to the other audio level and half the number of that seconds to fade back out once it untriggers. The same is true of the manual modes and PTT modes. And of course you have the reset button in case something happened to your secondary audio source. And so that's uh, Livewire in a very fast nutshell, working with Shoutcast. And you don't need to set stereo mix. And as I am up against the clock now, I may as well just end this video. So happy Livewiring.